All right, it's time for AI, the second demo. A slightly different use case here that I think is uh, is really interesting. At the end, I'm going to ask some questions around uh, to you, and hopefully you can give us some feedback on how and if you would use this. But really, I'm going to use AI to help with the tag mapping problem. Uh, and so let me explain that. Let's first look at our OPC server. So in this server, I've got line one and line two. Line one is nice, line two is not not nice. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So what do I mean by that? If you go in and look at the assets in line one, you have nice uh, tag names. You know, anyone can come in here and kind of understand this is RPM, power kilowatts, etc. There's three crusher machines in here um, that use similar naming. Mach X is is uh, obviously not named Crusher, but you get the idea. Like this is not this is not bad. This is fairly easy to map and understand contextually just by the names what's in here. Uh, line two not so much. So line two is a little more real world, right? Where tag names are. Uh, there's some amount of standardization to them, but they're not human readable. Yeah. So in here, you can see that you know HZ might be Hertz. I'm not sure. Uh, I've got the same layout where I have crushing machines. You can see that these addresses are a little different, but they do they do follow the same formatting, uh, but they're a little little different. And there's some extra ones in here. And then down here, I've added two other crushing or one other crushing machine. Sorry, but I didn't call it Crusher. And then here, I've added something that you would assume might be a crusher, but it's not. The addressing is totally different. So normally, you know, what I have to do, I have to put context around that data if I want to get it into other systems. So in high byte, that means I'm going to create a data model. It's got feed rate, you know, whatever for that crushing machine that I'm, I care about. This is the data model that I have. And then what I'm going to do is go and create instances. And I'd run this demo before, so I'm just going to delete a few of these. Okay. Uh, so I've got my crushing machine instance and down here I have the data model on the left and I'm going to go through because I'm at the site and I understand what this stuff is. I'm going to go through and manually map these out. So I'm going to go down to line two to the crushing machine and I know that F1776 is the feed rate and that uh, P2XUY is the power in kilowatts, etc. Right, So I can manually do this mapping and once I do, I can do a test read. I've now abstracted away all the tag information and the weird addressing and I have this nice contextualized thing. Awesome. But now I've got to do it to these other ones as well, right? I've got to go create Crusher 2 and then whatever I'm going to name this thing. And there could be hundreds of these in here potentially. So can I use AI to help me do that? And the answer is, yeah, you can. Uh, so you might have noticed I have an AI mapping tab here. In here, what I'm saying is I'm inside this instance configuration. So this is the instance that I have mapped. And I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the question of the LLM. I'm gonna say, hey, I've got this instance that I've mapped, and here's what it looks like. Can you go search some other address space? In this case, that branch we were looking at in OPC. See if you find any others that look like crushers, and then generate them for me. And then optional instructions, and you'll see where I use this. And then here, I just have a drop down where I can pick the source. So I have OpenAI and AWS Bedrock. Uh, OpenAI is direct. Bedrock is a service that AWS has where you can pick other models. In this case, I'm using uh, Anthropic. So let's start there. Uh, and I'm just going to hit generate. So what we're doing behind the scenes is we're passing the LLM, the instance configuration, and then we're going and reading the address space, scrubbing the values, and then passing the address space to the LLM and saying, hey, can you find any more of these instances inside this LLM? And if you can, map them for me and return the result. Uh, and you can see it's it's working at it uh, and it found some results. So in here, uh, the first thing you'll notice is Crusher 1 is not in here. Sometimes it is, it'll pull back Crusher 1, but it, it realized that that was the example we sent it. So that's in there, but it found these instances. So it found Mach X. And when I click on here, what I've done is I'm showing you the attributes that it's mapped to and where in this address space that we, we passed it, those are mapped. And you can see this looks correct. Um, and then if we do Crusher 2, same thing. So it went and found uh, Crusher 2. Pretty cool, right? And then what I can do is I can just hit import or import all. And then if I launch a new tab and we do a test read on that instance, that instance is now, we didn't have to do the drag, drag and drop. It's all mapped for us. We do test read and you can see there's no data flowing through. So it's all zeros and false, but it's properly mapped. Pretty cool. And you'll also notice that it didn't pick off this this one. It realized that this there was a different pattern and it didn't match. There was additional tags in here and it didn't seem to get confused about picking those tags off. It picked the right ones. 
So pretty cool, but it's not perfect, right? So let's uh, let's give OpenAI a shot as well. Use the latest model there. Sometimes it's not quite right, so you have to pass it additional instructions that just instruct it on what, what to do. So for example, while this is running, uh, let's first see what it returns. Similar result, not the same order, but that part doesn't really matter. So it was able to do the same thing. If we go into the address space, for example, and copy, create another node, and let's ask it again, uh, most times it's not going to pick up the extra one. Now, again, there's no state. When I hit generate, it's a totally new context and state. So LLMs are completely stateless. So I'm passing everything in again. So it, your, your result is going to be pseudo random, but you can see that it did not look under, um, it looked under the sum, but not the sum one. So it didn't find this one. So we can say, make sure you, you, you <laughs> look under sum one as well and usually with a little bit of instruction it's able to improve and give you back something that's that's uh, pretty useful and again I'm just using this to generate a few instances but you could imagine if there were hundreds in there uh, this is pretty impressive so you can see it called it Mach 1 and it did look under someone and it included that one as well so we can import that so this is pretty cool, right? So the, again, the only thing we're passing to the LLM is here's the instance, our, our configuration. It's an, our internal configuration JSON format. So here's the instance you configured. Here's the address space that you're trying to map to, not the values, just the address space. Put the mappings together. Um, so let us know what you think. You know, if is that running in the cloud? Is that a security concern? Would you be concerned about a feature like that if you could opt into it? Obviously, the product wouldn't ship with this on by default. You'd have to turn that on. Um, if it was running at the edge, is that less of a concern? But we think that you know this could save a lot of time and kind of that knowledge transfer from uh, folks in the factory into contextualized data. So it's pretty cool.